کہتے ہیں آزادی ذمہ داری کی محتاج ہے فریڈم میٹس ڈسپلن اینڈ دس ڈسپلن بھی یو بی لائک اے لاٹ وٹ وٹ آر دا ڈسپلن جو کہ آپ نے طے کر لیا کہ یو ول ناٹ ایور کمپرومائز آن ورک وائز ان یور ان یور کانٹیکٹ ورک دیٹ یو ڈو دی اوپنس دیٹ یو اسٹارٹیڈ اور سپورٹیڈ وٹ آر دوز فنڈامنٹلس دیٹ یو نیور لیٹ گو Honesty, non-compromisable, um, regardless of what, I mean, there are certain principles. So if somebody asks me to accept a bribe or give a bribe, the answer is no. If that means I lose a contract, if that means I lose, I walk away from the table. And I've done it a million times. Um, respect. Um, every person in any of my organizations deserves respect. Um, If I find somebody disrespecting a person, um, they let go. I deserve respect. I will not compromise on that. Um, and other people from my side deserve respect. I think respect is, is very important. Um, the third one is going to sound very strange. Um, I believe the word is insaniyat. and that is tied to the respect. But I think people are more important than companies. Um, people have laughed at me many times, but every time I've had to make a choice between money or a person, it's always been the person. Hmm. I think that connects with our next question about relationships as well. And why is that so? I think, you know, there's a very funny saying, Um, all relationships go through hell. The good ones get through it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Have to go into the ditch. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Relationships are important. Um, and there are so many different kinds of relationships that, you know, as a, as a human being you go through. But um, I'm an introvert by nature. So I don't have a hundred million friends. I'm not the one at the parties and I'm not the one in all of those social settings. But I think that one-on-one -on -one human connection that I spoke of earlier as well is something perhaps we're losing in modern life. We forget that a Facebook like is not the same as sitting and having a cup of coffee face to face with a person. Um, because on Facebook you can lie and say I'm okay. When I'm sitting in front of you, I'll probably break down and say, no, actually I'm not okay. Um, As you get older, and with four grandchildren, I'm up there now. Um, <laughs> yes, four grandchildren. Um, you know, everything else kind of starts fading away. The only thing that is left is your relationships. So if you don't invest in those relationships throughout your lifetime, you get to this point in life and find you really don't have much. And I see a lot of people like that. They have an office. They have a really big fancy house. They have a really big fancy car. That's all they have. Mm -hmm. Sad. Um, we're going to come to um, three into three. So the first three is uh, three most important stories from your life. Oh, okay. So I, I know you'll have to keep them brief, but it could be something from work, something from your family, and then something maybe which is beyond both of these. So, When you said stories, the things that came to my mind were the myths that we live with, the stories we live with, the stories we tell ourselves. So the first one was happily ever after. The story about how, oh, I'm going to get married and then life is going to be perfect. I'm going to have this beautiful house and I'm going to have my two little children and this and that with a white picket fence. It doesn't work that way. Um, I was an abused wife, physically abused. Um, I got divorced after four years and I spent the rest of my time alone raising two children as a single woman. Um, and that's when I realized that happily ever after is me, by myself, and that's okay. Happily ever after is within each of us. It's not external to us. So that's the first myth for the first story. The second one was motherhood. I had kids. And most of my life, I grew up 
being told that being the perfect mother meant that you didn't do anything else. You stayed at home and you watched your kids. And being a perfect mother meant you were self-sacrificing. That too was a myth because I was a career woman. I worked, I took care of my kids. And you know what? Um, 20 years on, 30 years on actually, they're fine. <laughs> In fact, they're happier than fine. <laughs> and um, I have a wonderful relationship with my children. You don't need to be a stay-at-home mom to do that. So that was the second myth, story. The third one I'm still working on. And that one's getting old. You know, when you get old, you're supposed to have this dupatta over your head. And you're supposed to sit in the chair and you have your grandchildren around you. Nani, dadi. I am a nani and dadi. And you're supposed to do all of those things. I want to change that myth. So I'm planning on taking jet skiing lessons. Um, I've already done the skydiving. You have? Uh, yes. Wow. <laughs> um, maybe some zip lining. <laughs> so I think the stories that are told to us on who we are supposed to be, how we are supposed to live our lives, those stories need to be questioned. And I think for me, those are the three stories that really impacted my life because I really had to fight against those myths because they were so embedded in my mind. So those are my three stories. Love them. Oh, we just got carried away. Here we are for the last two questions. Uh, this one, a lot of you asked. Uh, books, books and books. I personally think that people should go book shopping and should really, really not just go with recommended ones, but the ones that make sense uh, at that phase. Uh, but what are the three books that have inspired you the most that you would like to recommend to us? Well, I'm an avid reader, so I usually mm. read a book a day. Book a day? A book a day. But my three favorites, Ignited Minds, Abdul Kalam, The Soul's Code, James Hillman, if you haven't read James. it, yes, please read it, mm -hmm. The Soul's Code, and Letters from a Stoic, Letters Seneca, from? a Stoic, from a Stoic, yes, and that's why, Seneca, which is a Greek philosopher, uh, is, and why these three, can you quickly just sort of hint why these three, well, Ignited Minds is about, a nation, education, changing the destiny of generations. So, of course, that to me is wonderful. The Soul's Code, um, who are we? Where do we start? Where do we end up? Is there a soul? Uh, what does our DNA have to do with that? And let us from a stoic, is philosophy. Um, we've forgotten that, that fine art of philosophy, which is basically thinking. Um, thinking about why, what, how to live what are the priorities and, and that as a leader or as a, uh, in any leadership area um, the why is very important we keep asking what what are we going to do how are we going to do it but we never ask why are we doing it that why is important so those three books Beautiful. thank you last one um, three ideas for Pakistan because you're going through a very interesting phase very positive phase uh, how do you as a social entrepreneur uh, see Pakistan, your three big ideas for this country. Well, I think the first one is, you know, as a nation of 200 and X million uh, people, many of them, majority of them young people, I wish we could put together a volunteer call. We have too many people um, doing nothing. Um, that time could be really directed to really taking this country forward, so a volunteer call. Um, as you know, I'm passionate about education. It would be wonderful if we could take all of our graduating students in the higher education system and have them teach for one to two years before they do anything else. But that's one thing that would, I think, just help us so tremendously in fixing our education system. It's such a simple thing that can be done. Um, so that would be the thing. And last but not least, I know many people have said this one, but I really think um, it would change a lot. If we could just have all of our government bureaucracy, all the bureaucrats, just use the government services. <laughs> Please have their children in the government schools, have their children go to government hospitals. Um, I think we would see dramatic changes in a lot of these areas if they actually had to use the services. 
so those three things ye to badi achhi tarah se aati hai i have to give it to you <laughs> thank you what a what like i said at the start it's a privilege you took out time you agreed right away and so and you always been like that and i know that you like that yeah. for many many people uh, but more than that the ideas that you have shared were fascinating conversation my thank team you. and i are grateful i think you've inserted a fresh um, uh, i would say and you do that to all the meetings like i said fresh those to this next journey on the series and really really looking forward to recording more but thank you very much this was shaida salim uh, please look her up and her work impact network is an organization that is a big shout out for all the social enterprises in the country that are working on the kind of issues that this country keeps talking about education air water and i can tell you this if you have a worthwhile idea if you have the commitment people like shaida can really really enable you to turn it into an enterprise and to perhaps in solving the problems of our country find your greatest opportunities as well thanks a lot see you soon